Well, good day there, everybody. This is Joe, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, I have a little video about books, the importance of books. Stay tuned, please. I've been a collector and a reader of books since my high school days, back in the early 1970s, and I've owned, over the years, quite a few books. I don't own nearly as many now as I used to, just due to the practicalities of living in a small house and having to consider space, but a lot of my most prized books I still have, and there's a few of them that I've lost or gotten rid of over the years, and I've wanted to reacquaint myself with some of those books. So one of the books I recently acquired was due to the fact that we have this series I've done in the last couple of years on calculators, adding machines, and the abacus. And uh, I was a collector of pocket calculators in the early 1970s, back in the early days of the pocket calculator movement. And this is one of the books that I reacquainted myself with since I uh, somehow misplaced, lost it, or whatever a few years ago. But this is Games Calculators Play. And this was written by Wallace Judd, and it's a very 1970s style cover. And this was one of those books that was designed to acquaint people for the first time to the idea of pocket calculators and things you could do with them besides just practical calculation. And I wanted to get this book again because there's a number of things I'd like to try exploring in our, our this video series I've been doing about calculators and adding machines and whatnot. And I think this will be a nice little resource. It's a small little book little paperback from back in the day. I'm glad I reacquainted myself with it. As well as being a reader and lover of books, I've also loved the public library. And I've been going to public libraries in my town uh, since junior high or middle school. Uh, I, there's been a number of books that I've seen and read in the public library that are no longer available. And as you might be aware, if you frequent your public libraries, that Libraries tend to go through books, and then they kind of get rid of some of the older books and get new ones. And consequently, a lot of the older books kind of disappear off the shelves over time. A lot of these books might be out of print as well. And that was the case with me. There was a number of books I've enjoyed reading over the years. I would recheck them out periodically in the public library and on various topics. And several books I've uh, enjoyed reading over the years are no longer available from my libraries about the abacus. And this was one of them. This is a book called The History of the Abacus by J.M. Pullen. This is a classically manufactured and bound book, and it's printed in England by Hutchison Press of London. It has a really nice, high quality, the thick, glossy paper. It looks like a book from 50, well, from uh, 80, 70 or 80 years ago, but it really was from 1968, not that long ago. But anyways, this is a book about the history of the abacus, but mainly focusing on the Roman and European counting board type of abacus, not the Asian bead frame calculator. So this is an important little book for my personal research and for this ongoing video series about the abacus. And I'm going to share in the next few weeks and months about the abacus from this book. Now, there's also another book related to the abacus, the history of the abacus, that I have currently on order has not arrived yet. It promises to be a really interesting book also, and I'll show you that when I get it. Okay, one of the other series that I've been involved with, as you might know, is the tape recorder series. And it was interesting reading through a website recently, and I came across a review of this book called Neurocast. Poetry and Audio Research by Lytle Shaw, or Lytle Shaw. And this uh, explores how mid-century American poets associated with the new left mobilized tape recording as a new form of sonic field research. So in other words, exploring using tape recorders to create spoken word poems and experimental sound recordings with poetry even as they themselves were being subjected to tape-based surveillance on the part of law enforcement because they were part of the left. And during the Vietnam conflict, that was, uh, that was always a point of concern with law enforcement, et cetera, et cetera. But this is an interesting book because this is the cross-section between tape recording and postmodern poetry, which promises to be a really interesting book, and I have not yet delved into it, but it looks very interesting. So, 
If I learn anything new out of here, I'm going to definitely share it with you. This is not going to be a super long video, but I do want to mention this. And uh, a number of you guys out there who are my regular uh, viewers are also writers. And one experienced author is David W. Peterson. And David sent me this book a while ago called Love is Meat. And this is a book of poems and short stories that I am going to have to sit down and read. But he sent me this book with a little signed little note in it. And he sent me a typewritten letter, which I love. And I'm going to share, I'm going to do a book report on this book, but I apologize to David for letting this thing get too far in through the rest of 2018 before I even started it. So here we are, early 2019. I haven't started reading your book yet, David, but I promise I'll get to it. I did want to mention it, the Love is Me by David W. Peterson, and I'll put it down below. And I'll also try to put links down below to these other three books I mentioned. I wanted to stress to you guys the importance of books. Uh, it's easy for us to be tempted to, upon the first question of any issue, go to the internet and do a search engine search on it. And that's always perhaps a really efficient, good way to start looking at something. But let's, for instance, take this, The History of the Abacus by J.M. Pullen. There's historical information in here that you may not easily find on an internet search engine because... A lot of the internet doesn't really cover things pre-1990s very well uh, because a lot of those things are maybe out of print or not easily accessed. They're not in easily accessible databases, etc. So having books, classic books, older books that cover things from a more historic angle or more in-depth, have more information, are really valuable. And also, if you're a lover of books, of course, it's fun to have books and collect them and read them over and over again, as I do. Even humble little paperbacks like Games Calculators Play. Well, that's it for now. I hope you guys do enjoy books and reading besides ebooks, if you enjoy physical books as I do. I know they take up a lot of room and they're heavy if you have to move them in boxes, but I think they're important. And paper, I think, is an important medium. And if you guys have any suggestions for books yourself that you really like and you think might intersect with the interests that we've shown on this channel, drop a link down below or mention them down below in the comments. And I really appreciate your feedback and thank you very much. Until next time, have yourselves a great day and stay creative.